Before we start, just a quick note on spoilers. This video contains potential footage of all boss fights but the final ones in Super Mario Odyssey. I'll try to minimize the spoilers to what is really necessary for this video, but if you're very sensitive about spoilers, this video isn't completely safe to watch. With that being said, I have a confession to make. I usually don't like boss fights in Mario games. Or to be precise, I generally don't like boss fights in platforming games. There are a couple of exceptions of fights which I really enjoyed, but I'd say about 90% of all boss fights in platforming games just annoy me. They are either far too easy and can't be skipped but need to be endured in order to proceed, or they are really hard and take up loads of time without actually being fun. They usually annoy me. But I enjoyed most of the boss battles in Super Mario Odyssey. This honestly surprised me. When I fought my first brutal battle, I was sure that I was going to hate these fights, but I enjoyed every single one of them. And that's strange, because why should a brutal battle be any different than a random battle in Super Mario 3D World? They follow the same concept of a boss fight. Or so I thought, I replayed a lot of these boss fights over and over again and tried to find out why I enjoyed them in Super Mario Odyssey and what was different in this game. In this video I want to explain why I usually dislike boss fights and how Super Mario Odyssey does a way better job with bosses than any platformer I have ever played before. With the exception of a head in time, but that's a different story. So are you ready? Let's do this. Okay, so why do I dislike boss fights in most platforming games? First, most platforming boss fights have worked the same way for decades. There is a defense cycle where our hero has to avoid to take damage, followed by an attack cycle where our hero is able to hurt the boss. Once the boss took damage, the defense cycle starts again and then the attack cycle follows. Repeat for 5 or preferably 3 times and you got a boss fight. If the game feels super experimental, the boss might learn some extra moves after 2 hits, but that's it. Let's take a Koopaling boss fight in New Super Mario Bros. U as an example. Our plumber has to jump on top of the Koopaling, then the Koopaling goes into his shell and is invulnerable for a moment until he changes his pattern and becomes attackable once again. Or take this boss fight from Super Mario 3D World. This huge metal clown jumps around until he splits up into small metal liquid parts and becomes attackable for a while. And then he is a huge invulnerable metal clown once again. Just to be clear here, I know that there are tons of examples for boss fights that work differently, but overall this is definitely the most used boss fight blueprint for platforming games. And this design really annoys me for two reasons. First, the player has very little control over the speed at which the boss fight takes place. And second, this design punishes skilled players. Let's talk about speed first. So if a boss follows this attack and defend cycle pattern, then the defend phase is basically an auto-scroller. Our player has no way to speed this up. He or she just has to wait until the phase is over and attacks become possible. And then the waiting game begins again. Take a look at this boss in Super Mario 3D World. If Mario is controlled by person, who knows what he or she is doing, the game basically transforms into sit around and wait for a minute. But that's only half of my problem. The other problem is that a boss that is designed that way has to have a really low skill ceiling. By skill ceiling I mean the point where improving your play doesn't lead to any results in game anymore. A good game has a way higher skill ceiling than is required to beat it. In the new Super Mario Bros games for example, an unskilled player is probably able to beat the game, but then there is tons of room for improvement. A skilled player is able to beat the game way faster, to collect the hidden collectibles more easily or in more creative ways and the challenges change. The goal isn't any longer to beat the stage but to beat it fast or to collect all collectibles without dying once and so on. We're pretty far away from Odyssey's bosses now but stay with me it will make sense in a moment. So the problem with these cycle based bosses is that the skill ceiling is exactly the same as the skill that is required to beat them. There is no room for improvement once a player is able to beat the boss and that is frustrating in this case because at that point we are no longer playing a game but but basically watching a cutscene and move around in it a little bit. I believe a lot of bosses are often wrongly criticized for being too easy, while well, this is the actual problem. In my opinion, boss fights don't have to be super challenging, but they need to allow skilled players to shine while they can be a challenge for less experienced players. 
Just that no one gets me wrong. I don't think that 3D World or New Super Mario Bros. U are bad games. I actually love them. I don't even think that they have inherently bad designed bosses. The point that I'm trying to make is that they use a really old blueprint for boss fights, which isn't satisfying as a boss battle for people who are good at the game, and that they are frustrating for people who like to control the speed at which things move forwards in games. That's not a huge deal. I expected to find the bosses in Odyssey a little bit annoying, but I would have been okay with that. But that is not what happened. I I really enjoyed them and this says a lot about the game and surprised me at first. So here is why I was surprised that I enjoyed the fights in Odyssey, because at first glance they work by using this cycle pattern. Take a look at this brutal fight. Here Mario has to shoot the heads off the rabbit's head by using his own magical head, until the evil rabbit becomes attackable. Then a defense phase starts and once the defense phase is over it's attack phase again. The same is true for every brutal fight in the game. Here Mario has to wait for the hair bump attack in order to be able to attack and and then he has to survive a defense phase until it's attack time again. And as a last example, take the Bowser fight atop the clouds. Here we once again have to wait for Bowser's attacks until we are finally able to attack him, right? Well, surprisingly, that is wrong. Because, while at first glance, it looks as if all those boss fights follow the same old logic which forces the speed of the fight onto the player and doesn't leave much room for skill. This is not the case here. Absolutely not, as every one of these fights has some way to shine, if you know what you're doing. Let's take a look at the green head rabbit once again. Instead of waiting until the attack phase is over, Mario can actually watch which head contains the rabbit and if he attacks this head, then the defense phase ends. But that's not all, because if Mario wants to end the fight, even faster, he doesn't need to shoot the heads off the rabbit's head, but can attack him while he's cycling on the ground. This fight can be completed at lightning speed by cancelling the attack phase really fast, even the bouncing head jump can be skipped. This is really hard to pull off, like so hard that we had world record runs of Super Mario Odyssey that didn't get this perfectly in the first weeks, but it is there and something like this is hidden in almost every boss fight in the game. Bowser in the clouds for example can be done faster by grabbing the head with Cappy and then running close to him in order to skip the jumping animation. That's a small thing and most people won't even notice that these things are there during the first playthrough, but in my opinion it improves the boss fights so much. Suddenly it is not the game dictating the pace at which things move forward, but it's the player again and suddenly skill is rewarded in a boss fight. None of these fights are really hard, they are honestly really easy, but I don't care because getting the fight perfectly is ridiculously hard and so the skill ceiling is suddenly really high even though it is really easy to complete the fight and in my opinion this matters way more than how challenging the requirement to win the fight is. Sadly, there are still a couple of bosses which are closer to the old design philosophy, but even most of these fights have something hidden which makes them more interesting. I love that Nintendo realized this and it is in line with everything they did with Odyssey and Breath of the Wild so far. It looks like Nintendo's new design philosophy is no longer to create a static experience for players, but to create playgrounds where there's something hidden for everyone. If you love to collect things in a game, Odyssey has you covered. If you just want to finish the game, then it's a great experience as well. If you're an achievement hunter, then there are tons of different achievements in the game for you. If you try to beat games as efficiently as possible, the game has you covered as well. But if you're a really inexperienced player, it is not a problem. If you only play the game in handheld mode for 15 minutes on your way to work, don't worry, it is designed for this. But if you want to play it for hours in front of your TV, the game is built for you as well. Odyssey doesn't try to force an experience on you, but it tries to be a playground for any kind of player. Surprisingly, it succeeds at doing this and the way they crafted the boss fights is a great example for this. Most players will probably never notice that these tricks exist, but for some players they are really important and I'm sure there are tons of things in this game which people love but I'll never notice since it doesn't fit my playing style, but other people will love the game for things which I don't even realize. This seems to be the new way Nintendo does games and so far it seems to work out great. Thanks for watching this little video, I hope you enjoyed it. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to leave me a thumbs up and maybe you feel especially boss battle today and want to hit the subscribe button as well. I hope you have a wonderful day and to see you soon. Goodbye.